Have you ever wondered how mortgages work? We're gonna look into this in this video. So in this video, we're going to look at how to calculate a mortgage, how to input that information into Excel, how to use a financial calculator if you have one, slight differences between Canada and US and between variable and fixed, and uh, then how to set up a payment schedule to understand why there's more interest out of each of your payments coming out at the beginning and it's more towards the end that you pay off the capital. First off, how would you calculate a mortgage payment on a piece of paper if you wanted to do it that way? Okay. The basic formula that we're going to look at here is that your monthly payment is related to the principal that you use at first that you'll have to pay off. And this all gets multiplied by your interest rate that you're going to negotiate, divide, uh, multiplied by one plus your interest rate again, based on the number of periods that you have, and then all of that over one plus R to the power N minus one. So here, a thing to note is that this is a monthly payment. So a period here, uh, this interest rate will be based on a monthly interest rate. And this number of periods will be your number of years multiplied by 12, because you have 12 periods per year. So this is what you would wanna use and calculate it out. And yes, you could do it with a piece of paper and just a basic calculator and figure it out. You could also use a financial calculator and we're gonna get into that a little bit later. But first, we're gonna look at how we could do it on Excel. So if I take this here and I take the equation that we just had here, how could I set it up? So if we look at this example here, purchase a house that's worth 400,000, the yearly interest rate is 3.5% and this calculation here is just the rate per month which is uh, that amount from C4 divided by 12, which is my monthly amount. I have a 25 year term. I'm saying that I have a down payment of 50%, which means I'm down paying 200,000 and there's 200,000 dollars left. So this is really the amount that's important here is that is the principle that I have to pay off. So if I take the formula that we just talked about, let's say I call this paper formula, I'll have a situation where I need to say this is equal to my principal multiplied by one plus that interest rate on a monthly basis to the power uh, n, which would be this term, the amount of periods multiplied by 12. If you wanna make sure that uh, things get calculated well, I just add more brackets than less just to make sure. And then you divide this amount by one plus R, which is again, this amount here to the power, again, the number of periods times 12. Could have set it up that I had the 12 somewhere. And then all of this minus one, I have to make sure that it's this whole amount minus one. So I rather add extra brackets and then I, I'm just gonna make sure this formula is fine here. So I have my principal, one plus C5. Oh, I'm missing over here at the very beginning. I'm missing that it has to be multiplied by this interest rate per month. And now times the interest rate over the amount of, to the power of periods over one over, plus the interest rate over the amount of periods minus one, that should be it. Okay, so I have a thousand one and 25 cents. Let's see what the Excel formula would give me. So here with Excel, you could also use what we called the payment formula. And if you learn to use Excel, you'll see a bunch of different things uh, that are kind of embedded inside. So if I click on this, it tells me, well, tell me the rate. So the rate here is on a monthly period. I'll use this one here. The number of periods. Well, once again, this would be this amount times 12. And then what would be the present value? So then I use this. I could then say the future value 
it's not important. And the type, uh, don't worry about it. It depends if it's paid at the beginning or the end of the period. So for now, let's just set it up this way. So here we could notice it's the exact same number that we had in the other formula, but here we have it as a negative because this is the amount of money that's leaving. That's your payment to be able to pay off this amount. And it's just rounded to 25 cents, but it's exactly the same thing. So then just to make sure that your calculations are right, you can look on different websites and see if it all makes sense. So if I look on TD mortgage calculator, I could see 200,000, uh, this is just the, the period of my contract, don't worry about it, it's based on 25 years, we'll get back to that in the mortgage section, 3.5% monthly, and I'm getting 998.54. So there's something that's not quite right here. Check with another website, Scotiabank, again, 200,000, 25 years, 3.5%, 999, which is just rounding up. And then I look with Desjardins, again, 200,000 at 3.5%, 25 years. I could see it's 998 and 55. So why is this the case? Well, I did everything right. I could even show you guys on this financial calculator here, and I'll show you guys how to do it afterwards there. But in reality, what's going on here is that we're calculating this as if the interest rate was applied monthly, that it was compounded monthly. And if you use a variable interest rate, so if I were to go here on this website and change this to a open regular variable rate and make sure that it remains at 3.5%, I could see now that that 1,001 and 25 cents is the case as what I obtained on Excel. And the reason why is that when it's variable, it can be compounded monthly. But when it's fixed, in Canada there's a law, which doesn't exist in the States, but there's a law that states that when it's a fixed interest rate, it has to be compounded semi-annually, just to make it easier to compare all rates out there. So we have to make some adjustments here. So if I go back to my Excel file, okay, so let's calculate this what would this value be on a yearly period if we were to just kind of assume this is uh, the, the yearly equivalent. So what I need to find is this is the rate that's stated. I need to say plus one. And then this rate uh, gets compounded every six months, so twice a year. And then if I put this to the power of two, this is the equivalent I get yearly, okay, 1.0355. So you could see it's greater. As I mentioned before, since there's more than one compounding a year, there's two, it's a greater amount. But then afterwards, if I wanna see this in a semi-annual, uh, I mean, on a monthly framework, I'd wanna take this amount here and say that this amount here, I wanna see what it would be equal to if I were to divide this by 12 equal periods. And it would give me this amount here, which I need to then take minus one away. And this is the amount. So I could see that between this and this amount that I had here, which was just dividing the 0 0.035 by 12, and this amount here, it's slightly lower. Which, if I use this amount here instead, then uh, using C5, these amounts will change. So if I say I'll use C14, let's give it a shot. C14, uh, C14. And there you have it. I have the right amount now, which is the same amount that's obtained with these different mortgage calculators, which is 998.54. So, if I look into this, you could see that the first thing that you have to make sure when you set it up on Excel, because it's tempting just to use the payments uh, schedule, is to say, well, I want to use it, but I also want to make sure that it applies to the Canadian framework, and you have to assume semi-annual um, compounding. And I could do the same thing here, just switch the, the C5 here for C14, and you'd have the right amount as well. And if I were to do it with a financial calculator, you would simply say the number of periods is 300. My interest rate here, you have to make sure that you're saying like if it was 5%, you put five, you don't put 0 
So in this case here on a monthly period, I'd have 0.289562, which was obtained before. I could also calculate it over here. And then I say my present value, I owe 200,000, or I could put it as a negative if I wanted to. And then my future value has to be zero. And then I compute CPT, my payment, 998 and 54. So all methods work as long as you're inputting the right information. And that right information is semi-annual compounding. And then afterwards, this is fine that you understood how to calculate the mortgage but then afterwards what would be more interesting is, is if you could set up into a payment schedule because what's really interesting with the Desjardins website is you could actually notice that on the Desjardins website you can notice how your kind of capital is going down over time 3.5 percent is not that much let's say I bump it up to 10 percent what you'll see is that over this time period, at first, your capital is not going down fast and then it goes down at the very end. And if I were at a 1%, it'd be very close to being linear. That since I have barely any interest to pay, I'll have a situation where I'm pretty much paying off my capital year after year. So that relationship between capital and interest uh, just becomes higher in terms of the percentage of interest that is part of your monthly payment at first when you have higher interest rates. So we're bringing it back to 3.5%. And then if I look at this on Excel, I could set up a sheet similar to this one here where I'll have all my different payments from zero to 300. And then I'll use that payment amount that I obtained for all of those periods is a simple way to do it. But naturally, you normally negotiate a contract for five years, so you could set it up that the first five years it's at this rate, and then if you make projections on what the rate's going to be in five years' time, then you could write it off as a different rate and then make it a little bit more realistic. And in this schedule here, I could calculate how much I owe in terms of interest, and then the amount I've paid on that monthly payment minus the interest is going to be my principal and it's gonna bring down this loan amount. And you can notice that at first you owe more interest and that's natural because you're owing 3.5% interest on this whole $200,000 amount. But as time goes by, you're only gonna owe interest on what's remaining. So when you only have 50,000 left of mortgage, you don't owe as much interest. So if I go back down somewhere over here where you only owe 50,000, well, out of each of those payments, that 998, there's only 146 that goes to interest. So more of it goes to capital than at the very beginning. And that's the whole logic behind it there. So I invite you guys to play around with these schedules. You'll have some work to do to make sure that you master this, that you're able to set different things down. So like I could put dates and then I could easily drag this down and it auto fills. So play around with that, make sure you know it add extra columns if you want to make sure that it adds flexibility that you can add extra payments over time and just set it up nice and cleanly. And the last thing I wanna mention from this whole calculation here is a shortcut for you in the future to, to make sure that you know how to calculate a mortgage rapidly. Mortgages always go up and down, the interest rate always goes up and down. But if you take a number which is somewhere around reality of 3.5%, some years it could be lower, some other years can be higher, but if you assume 3.5% and you're paying monthly over 25 years, tell yourself that for every 100,000, you'll owe about $500 of mortgage payments. So here I had an example of 200,000 and it was very close to $1,000 of mortgage payments on a month. So if you're shopping around and you're seeing different houses and you're wondering, oh, this house is half a million, how much would it cost me every month? Well, if I disregard like insurance and taxes and everything else, and I just focus on the mortgage amount, if the mortgage rate is close to 3.5%, you should expect to pay somewhere around 2,500 mortgage payments for a $500,000 house that you owe uh, over 25 years. And that's always based on the amount of money that you owe. If the house is that much and you put a down payment of 300,000, well then it's 200,000 that you owe. So all in all, Hopefully this was interesting for you to understand how to calculate it by hand, how to input that information on Excel, 
but also when you use that information in the payment schedule in Excel, make sure that you compound it semi-annually, make sure that it works with what you see on different mortgage calculators online for Canadian banks, because this is where we are. And then how to set up a payment schedule is gonna be very useful for you and your term project that you'll have to do in this class. So hopefully you found this interesting. I'll talk to you guys soon. If you found this video interesting, please consider subscribing or joining my class where I guide you to apply and expand on the information found in these videos to real life examples. Have a good day.